an independent approach to your health span. Have you noticed how our healthcare system may not have your best interest in mind? Join Dr. Eckel in this fun and sometimes disturbing exploration of the state of healthcare and what it means for you. Now, here's your host, Dr. Eckel. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I am Dr. Greg Eckel of Nature Cures Clinic, and this is my podcast, What the Health. And boy, what the health, right? The planet is given all kinds of signals. We've got earthquakes down in Puerto Rico. We got Australia burning. Uh, Gaia is sending messages. So, you know, it. we live in the environment. We live on this planet. This planet is our home. In today's topic, I'm talking about longevity. I'm talking about the seven pillars to become superhuman. It might seem contraindicated, right? Like who wants to live that long on a planet that's dying? Well, let's get it together here, people. We got love. We can turn it around. I'm a radical optimist if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, and I'm really excited to be talking about this um, have so much in store in 2020. Um, my book launch of Shake It Off, an integrative approach to Parkinson's solutions is coming. I've got a soft launch coming here in February and a bigger launch coming in April. I have a brain degeneration summit upcoming in April, April 6th through the 12th, having so much fun with that. In fact, this morning I interviewed, it was surreal. I felt like a kid it made it to the NHL and was like facing off against Sidney Crosby. Now, if you know me, you know I love hockey. I'm originally from Western Pennsylvania. I grew up in Johnstown, a small town that is in Appalachia, the foothills, and it's a hockey town, right? Fanatical, uh, black and gold, uh, cheering and they don't let you out without being a fan. And I was a Pittsburgh Penguin, still am a Pittsburgh Penguin fan. Sidney Crosby this is a long-winded story, but I'm going to get there, um, is the star of the NHL. So who is the star in um, – <laughs> who is the star in the, um, in the functional neurology realm? Dr. David Perlmutter. This doctor has made such an influence on my practice. I got to interview him this morning uh, for my Brain Degeneration Summit, and – I, man, I was nervous. I, I couldn't believe it. I was nervous. It was a great interview. I'm excited to share that information with you uh, in th this, you know, in these upcoming podcasts and in the Brain Degeneration Summit. We talked about how to grow a brain, right? I'm a brain regenerative specialist. He has been at it. He's in the research. He's published. He's a New York Times bestseller. He's a fellow of, you know, the American Board of uh, Nutritionists. And, I mean, just a rock star in uh, functional neurology. He's the empowered neurologist. So, so fun. I'm going to share that. That's one of the pillars is nutrition. Um, but we got to talking about, you know, we've got these fires going on in Australia. And, you know, really – how diet influences our behaviors and our thought processes. And, you know, these seven pillars to superhuman, what I've got, how I lay it out, how I think about it. You know, I've been lecturing over the last, well, over the last 20 years. And I've gone on national television uh, and said, I want to live to be 150 years old. When you say this out loud, in pretty much any venue it gets really quiet. It's like you can hear a pin drop. People look at you like, did he just say 150? Why in the world would he ever want to live that long? And I'm telling you, uh, we live, this is heaven. You know, believe it or not, I'm a radical optimist. Uh, things, dreams do come true. We are powerful beyond measure. We are creators of our reality. And what we're seeing out there is representative of what's going on in here. So first pillar is mindset. And the second one is breathing. The third is movement. The fourth is nutrition. The fifth is sleep. The sixth is detoxification. And the seventh is community. And we're going to go through each one of these. I'm going to start with mindset because this is such, we are powerful goal achieving machines. I don't like to equate the human to a machine, but really what we think, I mean, really our brains and minds and reality wants to prove us right. And, you know, if we're proving, you know, with self-limiting thoughts of I'm no good, I'm not worthy, um, 
uh, you know, I'm a loser, whatever those thoughts are that are going in, I like to tell my patients and myself, you know, this is a dangerous neighborhood to go into by yourself. And what's going on in there is so much more important than what's coming out of here. Because if it's incongruent, it doesn't matter what you say. And I'm sure you've met people like that. They'll say anything, people pleasers, or, you know, they're just saying it. And you just know there's no way in hell are they going to do that. You know, it's just incongruent from the get-go. Or they just don't answer you properly. You know, you ask them a direct question, and they hem and haw, and it was a simple yes or no. Well, it's incorrect thinking. Their minds are not working well for a variety of reasons. But mindset and limiting beliefs. So many times I interviewed for my uh, brain degeneration summit, a doctor in Kenya. He doesn't like to fundraise. And I said, he hates fundraising, you know, but he loves doing amazing work in the bush. I said, why do you have that limiting belief? Like you hate it, but you, I mean, it gives you the vehicle to do what your love and passion is. Why make it into suffering? You know, can we turn this into a game? Can we make it fun? Can we make it winnable? Like go figure, like you can actually win at this thing we call life. You know, it, we don't necessarily need to suffer if you can suffer if you want. Um, but you know, it's really a spin on how you're looking at it. What decisions have you made? I made a decision to say, I want to live to be 150 years old. And what I realized was some of my behaviors, I wasn't walking my talk. It's what came up for me coming into the new years of what I wanted to welcome in this year was I got to walk my talk better, right? I want to be congruent and aligned with my words. And lo and behold, I was not eating well. I was, and I'll, I'll get into it in the nutrition. I'll self-disclose. I'll become very vulnerable with you. You know, um, those that, that know me, you already know this story, but I'll share it publicly. Um, just to show, you know, I'm human too. We're all human. We're all having this human experience. Uh, this mindset component though, we are creators. And I want people to really realize that because, you know, often, you know, I'll lecture on chronic pain and uh, it, it's unbelievable to me how many people say, this is my normal pain, my normal back pain, my normal upset stomach, my normal gas and bloating. And these symptoms, there's nothing normal about this symptom. Now you've heard me talk about it, but I'm couching it right here in mindset. And in if it's normal what the signal you're sending to your unconscious mind is no it's normal accept it it's fine as a young physician i used to go into agreement with people on their normal symptoms there are no normal symptoms it's the inherent wisdom of the body telling you to wake up pay attention and we need to change so if something isn't right in your world don't fight against it. Thank it. Like it's there to show you you're getting exactly what you've programmed in there. You know, not, not traumas, abuse, etc. I'm not saying that. But if you are, you know, I see patients every day, they haven't, they're not able to lose weight. They're in chronic fatigue. You know, it's like their relationships are just shitty. You know, like they've just got toxic toxicity everywhere and it, you know it's these things it's like as Ram Dass said it's grist for the mill like these are just signs along the way to say look I'm not I'm not enjoying this what do I need to do to change right because it's not I'm not saying it's easy but if you can get your head around it and actually lean into what signals are coming up like what's right in front of you just accept it be with it it's perfect the way it is and if you're not enjoying it then by golly you're a creator and you can change it we have those resources available to us right here this thing is so powerful and we're just tapped in when we get i love the work um out there around this mindset stuff, you know, uh, Bruce Lipton's biology of belief, you know, he says it's the environment stupid. He was a stem cell researcher and really showed it's not genetics turning on or off things. It's really the environment that's influencing our genes and the way that we express ourselves. Well, what is that? Our environment, our environment is what we surround ourselves with, right? There's the meta environment, Gaia, 
planet Earth. She's telling us things aren't right. You know, we've got this whole global climate change. We are going to get through it one way or the other. Um, I'm hoping with a lot of love. Um, but there's this component around making decisions. So once I made a decision, I'm going to live to be 150 years old. Well, what happens with that? I start changing my behaviors unbeknownst to me because I made a decision to do this. So it's, it's easy. You know, I'm, I get the vantage point. I'm seeing 80 and 90 year olds and they come in and they tell me, doc, you know, if I knew I was going to live to be this long, I would have changed some things when I was earlier. Um, I just joined and I'm excited to share this all with you this next year. I get to sit down with seven Nobel laureates talking about longevity over the, over my birthday in April, September, and then into 2021. I get to talk to the top notch longevity folks on the planet. We are not going to put this in the hands of amateurs. We're going to get going right to the source. Um, super excited about that. But your mindset matters. This thing, you know, it really does make or break you. So if you're coming in saying, ah, it's my normal symptom, or I've had this pain for 30 years, it's normal. You know, obviously, I don't want to take away your coping mechanisms, but you can't call it normal. You got to call it common. You know, just make that small change right there. Um, the research on the mind as well, I mean, I've been reading uh, Mind Over Matter, Medicine, uh, Mind Over Medicine as well, some great reading out there. Uh, one of those is around placebo and the power of the mind, and they did research on knee replacement. Now, this is knee replacement. This is bone on bone uh, material, right? No cartilage, bone on bone. They opened up people did the same incision, et cetera, did not put a new joint in and sewed them back up. The other part of the people, they actually put the new joint in. There was about an equivalent amount of healing in both of those groups. Go figure. That's how powerful the mind is. Like this stuff really does need to get out there. Um, you know, so I'm not saying you're going to think away or this is woo woo Dr. Eckel, but I'm just saying mindset matters. What I've grouped under mindset, this is the first tenet, is meditation. And one of the big take homes messages here in this longevity discussion and becoming superhuman is you are enough. You know, you don't have to be searching out there. You don't have to be go looking for the answers. You actually have them in the inherent wisdom of you as expression of God. You know, I never thought like this. You know, you know a little bit about my story. If you don't, I, I'll tell you, tune into episode one of the podcast of What the Health. But, you know, in light of you know, just daily news and what's going on in the world and, you know, a lot of loved ones passing. Life is fragile. Life is temporary. Life is transitory. And we've got this one go of it. And there's a reason why we all came together at this moment in time. And as the old sages and all of the religions and spirituality says, all we have is right now, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this in the future as a recording, it's still now whenever you are there watching. And, you know, we, it's a really wild space to get into is now. The past doesn't exist. The future isn't there. We only have this moment. And it's beautiful here, you know. And our goal with meditation you know, you don't have to get any fancy apps. You don't have to do it right or wrong. In fact, there's no wrong way to do it. You know, I hear so many people like, oh, my mind just won't shut up. Um, I went to so many practitioners over the so many years. And, you know, this one practitioner told me, you know, you probably could heal this up with some meditation a decade ago. And just coming to the realization, like maybe that person had it right after, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars later of all kinds of different therapies and just coming to that realization. It's perfect. Just right now, come to it. Just set a timer on your phone, 10 minutes. Just set it. See how long 10 minutes is and you just watch your breathing in and out through your nostril. 
Keep coming back to that if that's what you need to do. Of course, your monkey mind is going to go everywhere, right? Dangerous neighborhood to go into by itself. Your ego is going to strike out against that. This is stupid. There's nothing to it. No, I'm telling you, the research, I, re I interviewed Helen Wabe for the summit coming up in April. Um, she heads up chief scientific officer for Noetic Sciences. And uh, she gave the research on research on regrowing your brain and what it does for the body and the anti-inflammatory benefits. And it's phenomenal. And what it does, the bigger point though, is what it does is it quiets that monkey mind so you can actually tune into your inherent wisdom. You ask a question of your higher self, higher self, what do I need to know in this moment? And get quiet and listen and write it down. Just write it down. Just do it. Put the comments in after this. You know, I want to hear from you. I want to have some more engagement this year. I'm going to encourage you to like get back in touch with me because I really want this to be a dynamic community and I'm really excited. I'm going to bring it this year. I'm bringing it all. It's 2020. I'm sure you're sick of hearing that already on the seventh day of the month of the year, but heck, it's fun to say, um, but I'm going to be bringing it. If I'm not, you better post it in the comments. Dr. Echo, you told me you were going to bring it. Where is it? Let's do it. Um, so mindset, first pillar. The second one, breathing. So this piggybacks into this meditation component a little bit. And breathing, right, I encourage you to not stop. That's important for longevity and living, right? Simpleton answer coming from the, you know, guy from the foothills of Appalachia. But uh, it's a very important. When you look at different traditions through time, they all have a breathing component. And I'm going to be bringing Qi Gong energy work to the table, one of the lineages that I've been so blessed to study in uh, Sejuan province and up into Tibet was the Jinjiang school of Qi Gong. It's the muscle tendon changing school of Qigong. And I'm really getting the message that I need to bring this forth. I've been sitting on it. I do it personally. I call it shaky, shaky. I wrote about it in my book, Shake It Off, that's coming out. Um, and I'm going to share it with you. Today, what I want to share is a simple breathing technique called limbic breathing. Because in light of presidential election and the madness that is happening there, um, constant barrage by negative news, uh, the, you know, environmental disasters left and right. Um, maybe just you've got personal stress, you've got finances stress, your computer doesn't boot quick enough. Whatever the stressors you are carrying around, not to mention ancestral traumas, that that is also coming out in this, in this summit. I'm so excited. Did I say I'm excited to share this summit with you? Uh, we need to down-regulate our nervous systems. And one of the components of that is in, um, in limbic breathing. And so what I want to do, I just want to take a moment because you are watching. Let's do it together. Um, so I brought the sheet. If you want it, maybe put some comments in after the show on our Facebook page or on the YouTube channel. Um, in, the, in the podcast, please go out and leave some notes on, the, on your favorite podcast platform if you're enjoying the show. Uh, but this is limbic breathing. So take a moment here. We're going to sit comfortably in a chair or lie on the floor. Uh, spine straight, your feet flat on the floor, or just laying just real relaxed. Place both hands on your belly. And imagine filling your abdomen with air rather than your lungs. Every time, you know, I'll ask people to breathe and they breathe deep, breathe through their chest. And we really want that to become a deep belly breath. That deep belly breath contracts the abdomen and brings air in through the diaphragm. And as you have your hands on your belly, as you breathe in, your hands should go up. As you breathe out, your hands should go down on your belly. So on your belly, your belly should be moving. If it's not moving, just, you know, just change the breath. Make your hands move. It's like you have two kind of a pile of bricks on your belly. And as you breathe in, you bring them up. And as you breathe out, let those go down. Now, while we're breathing in and out through our bellies with our hands there, I want you to draw your attention inward. Listen to the sounds around you. Notice the sensation of air passing through your nostrils. Begin to slow your breathing down. You want to try to slow it down to three 
to four breaths a minute. Real nice and slow. In. Out. In. Out. Now, just keep doing that. You want the inhalation to last about five seconds. One, 1,000. Two, 1,000. Three, 1,000. Four, 1,000. Five, 1,000. You want the exhalate, hold your breath for two seconds when you get up there. So, exhale. You want to do this for 10 to 20 minutes. So, maybe just take 10 minutes. You can tie this in with your meditation. What that exhale, extended exhale does is it calms your limbic system. That's why it's called limbic breathing. It's pulling, so you inhale deeply, it's pulling on cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, the wandering nerve. It's putting in you into a relaxed state. This is going to balance your fight or flight stress response, your adrenal glands. It's gonna help balance your hormones. It's gonna calm your system down. I don't know about you, but even those two deep belly breaths that I did, it just really put me into a different state of being. So second pillar, breathing. Third pillar, movement. This one, you know, I was talking with David Perlmutter, Dr. Perlmutter this morning, um, just talking about brain health and how to regrow the brain. 20 minutes a day, right? This is not a lot of movement. Um, this could be, you know, calisthenics in your living room. This could be walking, going for a walk. Just get your heart rate up. Um, I am a big advocate of high intensity workouts that it's short pulsed material. So, you know, really there's the one minute workout book, which I love. This was a researcher uh, up in Canada. He was like, wait a minute. I'm telling people I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm telling people they have to exercise, you know, five hours a week. And I have young kids. I'm a university professor. I can't even move my body for that amount. Um, he got into studying the college students. And what he showed was one minute workouts really are key. The equivalent to doing three to five hours of workout. So what that is, four minute warm up, one minute high intensity, four minute cool down one minute high intensity, just like get your heart rate up so where you can't carry on a conversation. You know, great app for that, seven minute app. It gives you seven minutes, 30 minute bursts with some relaxation in between. Other things you can do, Qigong, which I will show you in uh, future episodes. There's the universe stance. Um, if you're interested in that, please get a hold of me. Put some comments underneath the show notes or get a, you know, Facebook message us on the Nature Cures Clinic one. Um, come to my website, write us an email. I'll send you that limbic breathing. I'll also send you a link to uh, my favorite Qigong flow, uh, which is just cloud hands basically with a, with a warm up for that. So movement crucial, Tai Chi, yoga, running, whatever your favorite thing is to move. It doesn't have to be, you know, gung ho exercise. I like for folks to pump iron, get some weight on their muscles uh, to stimulate uh, BDNF. This is brain derived neurotropic factor. Um, it stimulates circulation increases oxygenation, it feeds your brain, it feeds your body, it makes your cells more sensitive to insulin uh, and less affected by sugar spikes, etc. Very important movement. It's not sexy, but it is, and there's nothing to sell you in a bottle. It's up to you to start moving your body. But if you make that decision back up there, number one of mindset, this one becomes really easier, so much easier to put into practice. Four, nutrition. Nutrition 
right? There's been, I've had a lot of people on talking about nutrition. You know, the two biggies that came out of regrowing your brain with Dr. Perlmutter, you want to decrease inflammation and oxidative stress. Well, what's the big thing with nutrition? It's the white death, sugar, refined sugar. Um, what was the stat? 78% of processed foods have added sugar. Processed foods. This is not real food. This is processed food. This is corporate garbage coming down your throat. And it's killing you. It's killing your kids. It's killing your neighbors. It's killing your community. It's killing your loved ones. Um, I, I'm going to put it bluntly like that. This was my issue. I will tell you, I gave up the white death this year. Um, I have a sweet tooth. I was over the holidays. Here's my self-disclosure vulnerability. Um, don't throw stones. I know what you're eating out there. We are eating chocolate chip cookies. My daughter, she was, uh, <laughs> she bakes when she's emotional. So she was emotionally baking. She doesn't like chocolate chip cookies. So she made half a dozen without chocolate chips and half a dozen with chocolate chips. It's me and her at home. I get the chocolate chips, like, oh, I love chocolate chip cookies. I mean, who doesn't, right? They're addictive. They're, they're sweet. They're sugary. They're crispy. They're soft. Oh, you see where I'm going with this? So I have, a, I have a problem. I'm going to admit it to you. And you know what it is? So she asked me, she said, Greg, what will your patients think? You know, I'm addressing patients' diets every day in my clinic. What are they going to think if they knew that's what you're eating? I said, oh. Z, I will tell them this is what I'm doing. It creates empathy for me. I know what they're going through. I have the issue. I mean, this stems way back. I mean, I used to eat donuts like crazy, rolls of Oreos, you know, you name it. Ugh. I changed the flora and fauna of my microbiome many times over because of sugar. So talking with David Perlmutter this morning, said inflammation, white sugar, White refined carbohydrates, these things we know create inflammation. If you're going to live to be 150 years old, you got to take your brain with you. You got to take your body. You do not want to develop type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, it's really hard to get that to reverse. Now, we have had people reverse. I've had 14% hemoglobin A1C, which is way out of whack, uncontrolled diabetes. We've had folks come back under six and a half percent hemoglobin A1C, which is a three month window marker of your sugars. So it's doable, but just don't go there. It's very hard to come back. And you know, this addiction, it's hitting dopamine. It's hitting, you know, these very highly addictive neurotransmitters in your body. You're skewing everything towards it. You're creating gut bugs in your microbiome that are so sophisticated. They secrete, feed me, feed me into your blood that goes to your brain. Your brain says, we need sugar, right? Like if you're eating something sweet after every meal, that's a sign you have a sugar addiction, right? 78% of refined foods have added sugar. The industry knows this. They want you to consume. They want you to eat more. And unfortunate, I think I shared this, you know, a couple years back, I was in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, sitting at Eat and Apostrophe Park, Eaton Park, I'm sitting there with my family from Oregon, my Aunt Joan, and looking around at the tables. This is an all-you-can-eat buffet full of nothing, right? It's a bunch of empty calories, not great food, not organic. Um, and I looked around, there's obese people everywhere, just illness, right? American illness run amok. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I know we are all one, this planet, uh, us as people on it, and we're pretending to be separate at this time and space continuum right now. And these people are my family, and they are being treated not like people. There's no humanity here. They're being treated as product. How much can we stuff down their gullet? How many drugs can we feed them to cover up the symptoms from that crappy diet, right? So the nutrition aspect, this is huge. So the inflammation and oxidative stress. I interviewed Jeffrey Smith for the upcoming summit. Really excited for you to see what he has to say. Uh, Institute for Responsible Technology. He's been doing 23 years of research on genetically modified organisms, genetically modified food. 
cancer causing, uh, you name it, inflammation, it pokes holes in our cells, mitochondria, They're, it's just not real food. It's genetically altered food. And we are now passing this food on to the next generations of it's causing illness. They genetically modify this food to produce a higher yield. So it's sold under, we need to, we need to feed this many people on the planet. It's Roundup ready, meaning the Monsanto can sell more of their Roundup, glyphosate and Roundup. I have Stephanie Senoff on my summit as well, talking about the ill effects of Roundup and glyphosate. So these two things together, the take home, eat organic. And I will say, you got to get this summit when it comes out. Um, and if you're not changing your diet, I feel like I've failed you. Go all organic. It's very important. You either pay for it now or you pay for it later. I know people say, oh, it's so expensive. No, your health is worth it. You know, take your, you're going to be subsidizing organic farmers. So that's charitable giving. Put that into your food. Do your food and, you know, just pay for it now. Trust me on this. It's a big deal. There's case after case of um, behavior modification, energy, um, hormone corrections just by eating organics, getting the toxins out. This is the first root of elimination, and food is your best medicine. Of course, eat your vegetables. That's the pat answer coming from the naturopathic doctor. You've heard me say that before, but it is really that important. Um, in particular, the brassicas, the broccolis, the cauliflower, the cabbage, um, the, the young sprouts of the broccoli in particular, they're anti-cancer causing agents. You can get this from your food. Get it organically. All right, that's nutrition. That was the fourth one. We're 30 minutes in. This is What the Health, and I'm Dr. Greg Eckel. If you're just tuning in, you're missing a doozy. So go back to Nature Cures Clinic backslash podcast and download these things. Please, if you're listening, share this with your loved ones. I want to bring you top-notch, cutting-edge information for you, your loved ones, and your community. This is how we change the world this year. Uh, we there's a new economy coming and we want to be it like let's just be in the new economy this is how we do it we support farmers we support Gaia we support ourselves we all thrive like healthcare should promote thriving that's what the show is about what the health we want to expose some stuff we want to tell you the truth and we want to have it research backed and based and we want to do it with some enthusiasm, maybe a little bit of humor. So please, if you like what you're seeing, give me some comments. Give me some energy. Share this stuff, all right? Give me some five-star ratings out there on those podcast platforms. I, we need them. We need to get this message out. All right. Um, number five, sleep. Sleep is essential. You've heard me talk about this with some guests, but this is a big one. When we're talking about regrowing our brain, we want to live long. We want to be superhuman. Without your brain, really, you got nothing, right? I, I say we're heart-centered beings moving through time and space, but if you're not thinking right, and one of the interesting things, as we're, our diet turns into a Western diet or standard American diet, the SAD diet, higher in simple carbohydrates and sugars, what the research is showing is that cuts the signal to the prefrontal cortex, which is empathy. And your long-term decision-making is nil. You're not even thinking about long-term repercussions. So what the research is showing, as you get more simple carbs and sugar into your body, your mind doesn't work well. And in fact, you take more risks. You don't think about long-term repercussions and you're not thinking critically and without empathy. Does that look like anything going on today to you? It sure does to me. Uh, you know, it's like, well, let's get organics going. Let's get back in on food policy. Let's clean up our environment. Let's watch what, let's vote with our mouths. Like we dig our, you know, graves with a fork. So this is not new, but it's new energy. It's new cheerleading. And I just want to empower you to make the best choices for you. You're an adult. You can make up your own mind, right? The root word of doctor is docere or teacher. But, you know, organic is the way to go. Um, and then sleep. So sleep is another one. If you are robbing yourself of sleep, again, you're not able to think critically. So what does restorative sleep look like? 
what the research is showing about over a third of Americans are not getting adequate sleep. Over two thirds of the Japanese are not. The hustle and grind, the go, 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 if you're not productive, you're not living, that's old baloney. And in fact, what the research shows is if you get a deep restorative sleep, you're way more productive. And that's what I wanna support. I wanna support you as creator, as producer, as loving being that you are, so you gotta get your sleep. This thing, the Aura Ring, whatever the device, Fitbit, the you know the Apple um, Apple Watch, all of these things, they can measure your sleep. I think it is worth it to do that for a while. Uh, what does restorative sleep mean? Well, you need adequate REM, about an hour and an hour and a half of REM, minimally. That's how you consolidate your information in your brain. And then you also need about an hour to an hour and a half plus of deep sleep. That's deep restorative sleep. Deep sleep is when your brain and the glymphatics kick in. There's a cool functional MRI online. You can Google it of what it looks like when the brain hits deep sleep and the brain actually shrinks. Uh, the glymphatics, the lymph uh, fluid washes the brain, clears out the toxicity from the brain. That's how the brain detoxes. This was not known um, until I believe um, 2012, just five years ago. We didn't even know that the brain could detox itself. Uh, in talking with Dr. Perlmutter this morning, he was like, yeah, when I, he went to med school, the thought was the brain, once you have the brain, every beer you have is killing cells. You can live without them, you know, and away we go. We know now every cell in your body can regenerate. We live in a lovely, amazing time. So sleep is that import, important. So deep sleep, seven hours minimally. You know, this is hard for a lot of folks, parents, business owners, entrepreneurs, et cetera. Um, definitely trust me on this. You want to be tracking it. If it doesn't, if you're not tracking it, you're not measuring it. There's no way to know what's happening. Um, you could go in for a sleep study to see if you have sleep apnea. Um, sleep apnea, which is uh, the inability, you're, if you're snoring, basically you have sleep apnea. Inflammation in your airways. Higher risk of cardiovascular disease. That's still the number one killer out there, folks. Um, your energy your consolidation of memory, so with dementia, neurocognitive decline on the rise, um, this is very important. So that's number five. Number six, detoxification. Now, I had two whole episodes on detoxification, so go back through, um, go back through the podcast, please. I'm putting this information out for you. Share it. Um, but detox this is, um, you know, we're swimming in it, right? Whether it be, you know, the Southern Oregon fires or these fires in Australia now, you know, fire is the new reality. We're going through some droughts, some climate change. Well, there's particulate that gets released. If homes are burning, we get, we're burning plastics. We got electronics. That's releasing all kinds of toxicity into the world. Now, I'm not saying this is a doom or gloom or fear-based practitioner or anything like that. I think there's a lot that we can do to detox. And in fact, I have a webinar coming up next week on saunas. If you want to get in on that, you got to get in on my mailing list. You can sign up through my website at naturecuresclinic.com. I'll encourage you to do it because it saunas are amazing. I've been doing saunas forever. The research on saunas, this is something that you can put in it. You have your personal spa at home. You don't even have to go anywhere. In fact, I would encourage you to do it because it's one of the biggest levers that you can push to detox your body. It, uh, it raises your core body temperature, so it rids cells of cancer. Uh, it helps with cardiovascular disease. There's a huge study in Finland and Sweden where, you know, sauna is just part of the culture, showing people that go to sauna four to seven times a week for 20 to 30 minutes have all-cause mortality, meaning all causes of death are decreased by minimally 40%, maximally up to 60%. So it's a big lever. A simple procedure. You could even stack what you're doing, meditate and breathe while you're in the sauna. And then it doesn't even take any more time. You know, I'm all about efficiency. I grew up, I'm a Gen Xer. I love to say I'm a slacker. Obviously, you can see that with what I'm producing over the years. But 
um, you know, what uh, the saunas are one of those things that you could put in. It's a great thing to have in your home and do. I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting. This is another thing. Um, or caloric restriction. When you look at longevity and uh, our species, other species, they will always go through a caloric restrictive time. Um, I recommend, you know, one to three liver cleanses a year. So one of them could be, uh, you know, like Prolon, a fasting mimicking diet. It's a five-day modified fast. You're eating 1,000 calories on day one and then 800 calories on days two, three, four, and five. Uh, a great thing, it jumpstarts metabolism, weight loss, increases your own stem cell production. Um, really, as a longevity play, intermittent fasting should be there. On, and it also helps detox because you're burning fat and we store toxins in our fat. The other one that I'll recommend is a liver detoxification. So I'm working on a, a brain health smoothie, something that you could take on a daily basis that will help pull metals out of the body, gives you probiotics, and also feeds your brain what it needs to for long-term um, health and longevity and clear thinking. So that you don't have to go to heroics down the line, we can just get this going slow and steady like the turtle, the turtle wins the race. The jackrabbit runs and then has to pause and then the little turtle comes on by. There's a reason why that's a fable because there is a truth there. I love turtles, slow and steady wins the race. Um, other components of detoxification. So we are 80,000 chemicals. You gotta watch what you're putting on your skin. Your skin products matter. It's an unregulated industry. You know, our skin is our largest organ. And with that, we absorb a lot through our skin. And so if you're putting like nail polish, I have teenage girls and they like to do their nails. You got to watch what's going on there. This keratin, it absorbs it and gets into the bloodstream. Once it's in the bloodstream, it's going to your brain. Once it's in the bloodstream, it goes throughout your whole body systemically. So, you know, it matters. There's a bad joke that I would give. I'm going to share it with you here um, around lipstick. So as I um, lecture about detoxification, because I do, all of my patients will go through minimally one nine, five to nine day liver detox. Now, not a colon cleanse. When I bring up detoxification, there's so many colon cleanses on the market. Um, you know, it's not like you're going to be on the toilet all day. This is a working person's cleanse where we, you know, the liver, uh, I just heard a doctor said the liver is the most beautiful organ that we have in our body. So it was like, huh, the liver. Okay. I guess so. You know, because it does conjugate a lot of hormones. It filters our blood. It detoxifies the body. Um, I can see that it's a very important vital organ. In Chinese medicine, we say the liver stores the blood and circulates the blood. What travels in the blood are the healing properties of the body. So it, it makes sense. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amit, for that. So on the detox, sorry, I got a little bit carried away with that story. Um, Nine-day liver detox. So you got you to gotta change your filter, all right? We're getting exposed to particulate matter, uh, heavy metals, pesticides, solvents, glyphosate from the pesticides. It's in our food. Uh, we have these genetically modified DNA protein structures that we're eating in our food. So we got we to gotta eliminate this stuff. We got to detox it, clean it out. I don't want you walking around, you know, nothing worse than mindset of I'm toxic. I need to cleanse all the time. But short periods of time, for sure, it's going to jumpstart your metabolism, your energy, your clear thinking, um, your lose weight. You know, there's so many upsides to a liver detoxification. To see on the internet, oh, there's no proof that that works. No, I will tell you, we have clinical evidence over 20 years of medical practice dealing with thousands of patients. This is very important. If you don't clear that liver, what happens? The body's a great recycler. You eat something or exposed to something goes systemically throughout your body which brings me to my joke 
So uh, I lecture a lot on detoxification. It's a bad joke, but I'm going to share it. Um, so the average stat for the amount of the um, lipstick a woman eats in a year is one pound. Um, the average amount that a man eats is two pounds. But I'm bum. I won't quit my day job. I'm sorry I shared that with you, but I couldn't help myself. Um, right, bad, bad joke. But I, I told it anyways. Um, you can laugh at me then, okay? Um, and humor is part of the program. Uh, so laughing, it does release endorphins, it increases your circulation, and you just look better with a smile on your face, right? All right, so enough of that. Um, one component, again, another plug. So that's number six. So we had mindset, breathing, movement, nutrition, sleep, detoxification. Now we're coming up to community. We're at a quarter till the hour. Um, I want to just put a plug in. This is What the Health. I'm Dr. Greg Eckel. If you're just tuning in now, you're missing a doozy. Go back to the beginning, naturecuresclinic.com backslash podcast. Download these episodes. Get this one on longevity, becoming seven pillars to becoming superhuman. Those seven pillars, mindset, breathing, movement, nutrition, sleep, detox, and community. So coming up into community, well, why do I have community on here, right? Well, if I'm going to live to be 150 years old, by golly, I don't want to do it by myself. I want to do it with you all, and we can do it together. We can do it with our brains. We can do it with our brawn, and we can do it with love and community. But the longevity research shows those living with a purpose and passion and in community, they live longer. Well, what is it about community? Boy, we need to reconnect is really one of the things that we got to do. There is a disconnect syndrome that is being shown out there as we get more and more into the virtual realm, more and more onto the computers, on the handhelds, you know, getting our little personal dopamine hits from the platforms that keep us on there longer and longer. Really put some limits on there for yourself. Time, you know, measure the stats. You know, I was part of that digital dementia summit um, showing that kids are showing they have dementia now because of screen time, seven hours or more. If you're working in front of a screen, this is you. I went and lectured in corporate America here in Portland, Oregon. And, uh, you know, the employees, did, they were like, wait a minute, you're talking about us. We're going to get dementia. Well, yeah, the stats on it are staggering. It's like 50% of people by the age of 65 are going to have some form of dementia or Alzheimer's. That's not good. We want to stack the deck so you're not in that 50%, right? Um, and I want to lower the overall statistic as well. But, you know, I think what it is showing is we are living in a toxic environment and we need to do stuff now. Like now, all we have is now. That's what I started the podcast with. Now is now. So we've got this mindset. Now we've got community and we want community. Well, what about community? What is it that does? It is around sharing. It's around being acknowledged, being heard, being seen, being understood. You know, simple acts of kindness. The hippies had it right. You know, pay it forward. Just do some crazy act of kindness out there. The world needs you to step up now. You know, it's time. Like, we can't wait any longer. Let's just do it. Let's wave at each other, smile, say hello, beam love. I will invite everybody in this community to be lovinators. This one came from Soraya, who passed two years ago. Bless her heart. And love a nation and heart beaming people. You know, let's, let's just do it. It is so uplifting. It's attractive. It draws people to you. Be the host. Like, it's our planet. Like, just act like you belong here because, by golly, you do. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening to this podcast. You know, I want to encourage you to open your heart. Uh, it's It can be painful out there. And, you know, there is, there's a lot of grief. There's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of anger. Be present to it. It's not going away. You know, we pretend we put these blinders on, we eat, we consume, we try to get away from it, but damn, it's there. And just feel it. 
you know, it's not going to kill you. Um, unless you put the blinders on and close the heart. I think that's why heart disease is the number one killer. We're closed hearted people because we can't stand the reality out there. Let's just be present to it this year. It's here. It's happening. Let's see what happens, you know, as we call in our higher selves and our great, highest greatest good for all living beings to relieve suffering in community. Let's reconnect. Let's reach out. Let's talk. You know, get in touch with me. I really am encouraging you to get in touch with me. I will answer you. It might take me a little bit, but I will answer you. You know, I don't want to, you left feeling abandoned. This is our community. I want to serve you. I know I've been a little bit, you know, aloof and amiss. I'm plugging in and I want to plug in. We'll plug in here. Maybe we get together in person. Let's see. Maybe at one of the power points of the planet. I'm into nature, you know, out. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to get out there too. But this is your pep talk, you know. This is Dr. Eccles' pep talk on becoming superhuman. Um, I really, um, you know, a lot of love for you all. I really appreciate you tuning in. I take this very seriously, our relationship. I want our community to grow. I want to share with you. If you have specific needs that you want to know about, please just write them down in the comments or send me an email. Um, at, get on the website at naturecuresclinic.com and plug into our biosphere. You know, we've got a lot of programming coming out. We're talking about longevity, brain health, how to thrive. You know, I put the, put the flag in the earth on taking a stand for your health and your longevity and you thriving because that's the world that I want to live in. I want to live in that heart-centered place, the, you know, our, the more beautiful place our hearts know and desire. Awesome book. I highly recommend it. Um, all right. So just to recap, I know I've been, I've been ranting. I've been rambling. I've been rolling. Um, you know, I really appreciate you for staying on, coming along the line uh, for the road, uh, for the ride, for the journey. Let's do it together, right? I've, I've declared 150. You might think that is still crazy. Yes, it is. And you know, why the heck not? By making that decision, whatever your decision is. So one component, I want you, if you've ever thought, how old do you think you're going to be when you die? Take a moment and just, you know, write it down. Just think. How old do you think you're going to be, right? The, the stats are out there. They're horrible. In fact, the last two years, life expectancy for those living in North America and America have gone down. First time ever in, in our species history. They've gone down. It's ridiculous. You know, it's like 78 for women, 76 for men. Don't quote me on those. But it's, it's not good, right? Well, how old do you think you're going to be? Maybe you said 86. All right, well, what do you think that year looks like right before you die? What do you think? Like, most people answer that. You know what? Actually, life looks pretty good. I'm pretty strong. I'm, you know, I'm out. I'm mobile. I got freedom of movement. I don't have pain, you know. Or other people are thinking, geez, yeah, I don't want to live that long because I, I remember, you know, Aunt Flo and she had dementia or you know, Uncle Rodney had that kidney failure or Aunt Sue, you know, was in chronic pain. Whatever those pictures of aging, that was not healthy aging, right? We want to promote aging where you're out hiking mountains. Maybe it takes you a little bit longer to get to the mountaintop or you got ski poles to help with balance to get up there, but you're still able to do it. Guess what, folks? They're doing that in Vienna, Austria. I was over there in the 90s. I was hiking mountains with 80 and 90-year-olds. That's healthy aging. That's what I want to promote. But let's say you said 150 or let's say 86 and you said, I look pretty good. Well, do you really honestly think you're going to die the next year if you're feeling really good? You got freedom of motion and mobility. By golly, no, you probably have five, 10 more years. So just by tuning into the show, we just extended your life by five to 10 years. There you go. It's my gift to you. Um, in health, right? So we're talking health span. You know, basically, we want to live full and long to the end and then boom, die. 
Like that's the way to go. That's how I want to check off the planet. So think about it. If you haven't thought about it, rate me. I'd love to know, you know, how old you think you are going to be when you die and what that year looks like before you die. And then honestly ask yourself, do you think that's it? Um, and that's how I got to 150 years old. Of course, I wanted to push the envelope and put it way out there because I want to be the picture of thriving. I want to learn for you. I want to share with you what I'm learning from the world's best minds on this subject. So please share this show uh, with your loved ones, uh, maybe just for the, uh, you know, comedic relief, but I'm hoping you got some good information. If you did, please get in touch. Let me know. Let me know what topics you want me to cover this year on the podcast. I'm going to keep bringing on uh, my interesting uh, guests. I think they're interesting. I learned so much from interviewing. I'm having a blast doing this. Um, I really want to thank you for tuning in. I honor you for taking the time with me today in this moment of now. Do that breathing. Get your body moving. Get on organics. Just start with those three simple steps. Much love to you and your family. I really want to thank you for tuning in. This is What the Health. Tune in Tuesdays, Pacific, 2 to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks for being on board here with me. Mm -hmm.